While the Odyssey expansion will bring a large number of improvements to Elite Dangerous, the new planet generation technology will cause the geography of landable planets to change. While this won't affect orbits of planets, so Meter and Hollow will still be absurdly fast, it will mean some of the more unusual worlds may become more mundane. In this video, I do a brief guide on some of the planets or features you should see before Odyssey launches in case they are no longer quite so special come May the 19th on PC. While rocky ice and ice worlds can be extremely dull, they can also be the most extreme of worlds, and as such, it is these worlds that will be hardest hit when Odyssey launches, and in this section of the video, I give three notable examples of worlds that may change. The first world is Nervi 3A, which is notable as a home Mount Neverest, one of the largest lone mountains known in the game. It is so large that Frontier had to reduce its height so its summit was no longer above the orbital crew zone as SLV started floating off into space. We could visit it in the Alpha and it appeared to have shrunk again so visit it while you can. The second world is Pramesh 2C which is famous for canyon races in Type 9 heavy transport ships and its epic mountain range. This world is another one that may change in Odyssey. If you want to take part in a canyon race, or just visit the course, the start line is found at latitude 3.7330, longitude 46.9007, and details of the course and an app can be found at Commander Scorpius's website. The final world has been dubbed Testicle Moon due to be covered in crevices which can be over 10 kilometers deep, and is the first moon of the second planet in the Sinefe VM-D C15-10 system, and it is in danger of being castrated in Odyssey. Due to the body being so far from its parent star, it is very dark and night vision is a must to make the most of a visit. Another must-see feature is the monolith. Unlike the previous locations, the monolith is located on a high metal content world, Guroji A1. To find the monolith, just target Godwin's progress a non-landable surface installation on the planet, and on approach be prepared to be stunned. Mount Neverest, while big, has nothing on this, a 20 km tall cylinder with Godwin's Progress on top of it. There are two major problems with the monolith though. The first is, is that it is very easy to get trespass fines and a bounty from Godwin's Progress. The second problem, and the most severe, is that if you get too close to the monolith, the game will crash. This was a big disappointment to me because I wanted to land on top of the monolith, get out in my SRV, and then base jump off the top of it. As I stated earlier, all worlds with extreme topography are at risk, so if you have a favourite planet with extreme features, it's best to visit it now before Odyssey launches. While the new geological sites technology was not fully implemented in the Odyssey Alpha, there were still some geological sites that could be found, and I noticed that the geysers I found were spread further apart than normal and did not appear as a blue dot on the ship's radar, making them harder to find. It was also not possible to use the coordinates of a site in Horizons to find a site in Odyssey, as the site scattering system has changed. It is therefore possible that some geological sites may be significantly different in Odyssey and harder to find, so it is worth paying them a visit in Horizons before Odyssey launches. If you want to find a particular type of site, you can use a codex to find a system in which they are located. You will then have to use a system map to determine what planet they are, they are on based on the type of feature you are after. Geological sites are relatively common though, so unless you want a specific variant of site, it shouldn't take you too long to find a geological site just by keeping an eye out when playing the game as normal. Just make sure you are carrying a detailed surface scanner so you can locate the sites on the planet's surface. Geological sites are also worth visiting before Odyssey launches, as they are currently a guaranteed source of raw materials used for synthesis and engineering, and while this will probably still be the case in Odyssey, it is not guaranteed. The final feature that could change when Odyssey launches is locations and layouts of the existing planet-based biological life. While the new heat map system will in some ways make it easier to find biological life, as you will be able to tell using the filters if there are multiple types of life on the planet, as with the geological sites, the scattering of biological points of interest will probably change due to the new topography of planets. In this section, I will give you the locations of a few biological sites that are relatively close to the human bubble that you may want to visit. 
Even if it is just for gathering raw materials, because like geological sites, biological points of interest are a guaranteed source of materials that are dependent on what is available on the body they are located on. The type of life that is least likely to change significantly are Thargoid barnacles, as they are currently classed as Thargoid rather than biological in the system map. It is therefore likely that the layout of barnacle sites will probably remain the same. What may change is the number of sites and their locations on the planet. The nearest Thargoid barnacles to the bubble can be found in the Pleiades and the Colsac Nebula, with the large barnacle viewed above being the fifth barnacle site on the fifth planet in the Pleiades sector PM-T B3-0 system. In addition, some barnacles are a source of meta-alloys, though I find Thargoid unknown structures a more reliable source. In addition, Thargoid interceptors can visit barnacles on refueling missions. If you do happen to visit the large Thargoid barnacle in the Pleiades and decide to take a look at the biological life on the same planet, you'll probably find it to be a bark mound. Bark mounds are ubiquitously found in all nebula and they are found on planets whose temperature is in the 200 to 400 Kelvin range, give or take a few degrees. They are so common I refer to them as bark weeds as they make looking for other types of life in nebula a pain. Moving slightly further afield, you can find space anemones, also known as space pumpkins, in some A and B class systems with there being multiple variants of them to be found, and sometimes the variants can be found within the same system. Some of the nearest anemones to the bubble can be found in the HIP 18120 system, and as with geological sites, you can use the codex to locate a variant of interest. If you're near or in the Guardian bubble, or near to one of their far flung outposts, you'll probably come across brain trees. Like space pumpkins, there are multiple variants of brain tree and one relatively nearby system that has multiple variants in is Kappa-1 Volantis. The last type of life I will describe is also one of the rarest and is furthest from the bubble, and that is crystalline shards. Crystalline shards are a very good source of the rarest raw materials, and are unusual in that their point of interest also combines a geological site within it. The nearest site of crystalline shards is in HIP 36601 and is approximately 1500 light years away from the human bubble, and the bodies are located far away from the primary star. To conclude, while the changes to some of these worlds and features may end up being disappointing, I am also certain that Odyssey will bring a whole new set of sites that by accident or design we end up being amazed by. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. Shields offline. Eject. Eject. Eject.